So we already talked about onboarding and customer success. And um, what we found out that if we have a lot of features, we need a lot of content to support those features. Um, of course, if you have a, 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 a say um, a Tiger Woods like uh, a UX designer, uh, the better the uh, user design, the less content you need. Of course, that's also uh, the interaction between. Uh, but assuming you're not, you need some con uh, content to support uh, features. Um, we also found out that uh, we need automation on just marketing automation, but not on the acquisition process, but on the product, product engagement uh, and uh, customer success process. You really have to be easy to contact uh, at first, chat, email, phone, and also proactively. Uh, so um, based on behavior or non-behavior. So what we, uh, can we do more to serve them and to retain them as a customer? Uh, well, we're going to talk about churn reason analysis, upsell, cross-sell, and uh, your pricing um, strategy, loyalty programs, gamification, and focused attention and service. Churn reason analysis. Well, what is churn? Uh, cancel their subscription by performing an activity, lock in, etc., and don't renew uh, the contract. They let it expire, or they buy once and then never come again. Um, what to check for is good fit, bad fit customers. Like if you're selling uh, to bad fit product, uh, uh, bad fit customers, um, then you will never be successful. Um, and the same uh, is that uh, your customers uh, they need uh, need to have a potential to succeed. Like. Uh, if you, the, their business model uh, shouldn't be in decline or um, or uh, um, or anything else that they business wide can they is it reasonably possible they will get success out of your product? So don't just sell for the revenue because uh, it will hurt you probably in some sense. Um, well and. Um, did they churn for an incident or uh, did they not achieve their desired outcome? And the incident can be uh, uh, Corona as an incident, um, well, a takeover, etc., cetera, uh, or a new manager or new, uh, et cetera. Um, how do you find it out? Ask them continuously, ask them after the consolation, then you get the best quality results during cancellation they, uh, they you get more uh, I'd say psychologically uh, wanted behavior I'm not sure if that's in good English but them telling you what you want to hear um, watch product user behavior I think we talked about it again and again and over again uh, watch product impact and as easily it's written down, as difficult it is to talk about and to measure it. But what impact uh, does your product have on the business or on the life, uh, personal life of your users? So in the B2B, of course, is the business life. Uh, and that, uh, that can be a critical event. Um, that can be a revenue increase or uh, engage with their clients again or save risk uh, or cost or uh, but it's something that uh, you want to keep an eye on and if possibly um, measure it um, if you're getting the uh, making the impact that you hope to make uh, create for your customer 
uh, and last, of course, public reviews is really uh, can be an important source, and uh, especially if the reviews get into volumes. Uh, um, it's really difficult, uh, important to monitor, not only from a customer ser service perspective, but also like, hey, uh, what's going wrong? And uh, as an ultimate signal of, um, of uh, discomfort. Uh, Lincoln Murphy uh, from 16 Ventures, one of the blogs I really recommend you to follow, uh, created the churn classification mod uh, uh, model. Um, and you have two axes on the one axis, avoidable versus unavoidable. And uh, on the other hand, expected versus unexpected. Uh, well, if you first go to uh, to the right, to the unavoidable um, churn regions, uh, they've outgrown your product. They are bad fits. We talked about it, like actually they would never had a real chance or real uh, they could never get value out of your product or whatever you were tried or delivered. It was not for them. You shouldn't have signed them up at all, actually. Um, unexpected, but uh, unavoidable, out of business, a, t uh, a takeover, corona, merger, etc. cetera. Um, then the avoidable and expected uh, churns, are the ones that you uh, is the primary task of your uh, uh, customer uh, uh, success manager. Uh, that's why you build all the content. That's why you uh, build all the automation flows. And uh, uh, although you did all the efforts, you saw their usage going down and uh, or their uh, the benefits from your product, and you thought like, uh, okay, this is. Uh, I have to lower their score or automatically their, say, their lead scoring in a reverse sense of customer scoring um, because they really um, don't show the behavior of successful customers. And in the end, you reach out, you call them like, hey, what's uh, what's happening, uh, et cetera. Um, what you should watch, at, uh, watch uh, carefully is if you don't expect, if you have done a lot of uh, uh, customers that have um, uh, are high on your customer scoring, say that you you have a high churn to retain to retain them, so low chance to re uh, churn, and it do, they do churn, um, then uh, you really really want to be on your alert because uh, you don't know what's going on, what's going on. Did something uh, break? Uh, did they got uh, a quarrel with a, a customer service re representative? Whatever, you, you don't know what happened. So be on your uh, watch. Yeah, I thought I think this is the most difficult slide to talk about today, uh, upsell, cross-sell, and pricing model. Um, Your upsell and cross-sell uh, potential is already built in, or uh, you already have to think about it when you're building your pricing model. Um, so if you have a usage-based pricing model, you need more usage. Um, so can you have successful customers without more usage? Um, if you have a per user based pricing uh, that can work for large accounts, uh, uh, but not for small businesses because uh, they don't want to, then they're gonna uh, uh, not allow certain uh, members of their staff because there will be light users uh, of your tool uh, or your product. Um, and that can, I uh, say, burn your customer success with that with that uh, company, or lower your chance on customer success. Uh, of course, if you say your tool saves labor costs, 
but then it's a fair pricing model because uh, and it doesn't matter because your customer also saves the labor cost. So, um, but you have to, and we talk about here from an upsell uh, perspective. So, uh, how you can sell more. Um, feature based pricing, make sure the extra features create extra value. Like uh, if I'm using a CRM package and I'm emailing now a lot and uh, I get a call and email about this SMS feature. Well, you need me give, to give me the use cases and point me out to it. Like, okay, well, this can, could really create value for me. And then I will uh, uh, start using it and start paying more. But if I don't see or believe in the extra value, you can have a, a difficulty by upselling it. Um, and if you freemium based pricing, uh, make sure you have a lock-in effect. You can have think something like uh, uh, your uh, iPhone, uh, uh, or if you're a customer of Apple with your iPhone, or uh, with uh, Gmail, like you get a really big usage for free. Uh, with iCloud, but uh, if you get a certain size, you have to pay a monthly, but then you really already have a lock in. Same with Gmail, I believe you have 15 gigabytes or something. So, uh, but afterwards, you have to start to pay. Um, but that's uh, the lock in effect. You're really that. So, um, but I have to, you need a lock in effect before you can start in, uh, asking uh, upsell. So, um, A thought that came to mind to me when I saw the image on the right. Maybe first I will tell about the image on the right for, for a really nice website uh, for entrepreneurs.com. Um, and in the resources of today, there are more links to articles of them. They're really, really some really good content. Um, on the lower bar, that slowly lowers revenue from one group of users, so a cohort. Uh, with no upsell or cross sell. So uh, in time, there will always be some churn. Uh, they will uh, lower their monetary value and you need uh, upsell revenue to the successful customers of that uh, cohort um, to grow your revenue. And I think um, when building your pricing model, you have to think about uh, one central question or uh, one of the central questions uh, could be, like if we had zero churn, so very happy customers, and no upsell or cross-sell options, how would the revenues from a cohort increase organically? Because, um, so you have to need to, you want to grow as a business, you want to make more profit, um, build your team, uh, create more features, etc. But uh, I think this has to, has to be a question that you need to be answering um, or you addressed. So to wrap this slide up, um, you're thinking or making uh, about a product map, uh, but I also think you should think about a pricing map or an upstream cross sell map. Um, and both uh, uh, from your your method of pricing, but also, hey, how it's going to work in time and in different scenarios, like low churn, no churn, high churn, etc. Loyalty programs. It's more a B two C thing. Um, I thought it can be really interesting, really important. 52% um, of American consumers will join a loyalty program of a brand they make frequent purchases from. Uh, obvious witness is, of course, the Amazon uh, Prime program. 50% um, of consumers say the primary reason for joining a loyalty program is to earn rewards on everyday purchases. Um, so loyalty programs without frequent uh, thing in it, I believe, uh, 
it's not here on this slide, but uh, I've read somewhere that that hard to hard to uh, keep uh, users engaged. Um, I have a shop here around the corner. They saved my uh, loyalty cards. They, uh, I come in the shop, they uh, take my card to really pen and paper and say, okay, uh, Mr. Oakstrader bought this amount and uh, they do it for me. 36% uh, of consumers shop uh, more frequently in stores where they can earn fuel, reward, uh, fuel rewards. Um, loyalty leaders grow revenues roughly two and a half times as fast as other companies in their industry, uh, Harvard Business Review. Adding a loyalty program to an e-commerce platform can increase average order quantity by 390%. So, impressive numbers. Uh, you can have uh, pricing uh, features based on length of subscription. You can think about like, uh, hey, uh, we're going to unlock this feature for you because you are a free year client. Um, you can offer discounts, one time or permanent discounts, uh, premiums uh, to content events inclusive. What, what I have seen in my life about uh, pricing and loyalty, uh, and you take another uh, uh, factor into consideration, it's called branding. I always would opt for the third option, premium. Uh, so adding value because it boosts your brands and discounts uh, or anything related to prices um, can be uh, undermining your brand or your profitability. Gamification. Um, it was something that, uh, say, 10 years ago, when uh, it's really got uh, traction, um, got a big momentum. Uh, the last few years, I uh, haven't seen a lot of people talk about it, um, but you do see it a lot in employee onboarding. People like it to get a feedback about learning, etc. And uh, in some covered ways, you st still, st still see it a lot. And we're gonna talk about it here, but uh, gamification is the application of game design elements and game principles in non-game contexts. It can also be defined as a set of activities and processes to solve problems by using or applying the characteristic of game elements. So, um, an example, give rewards points for completing a certain task. And task is a little bit a negative word. I mean, always something that we have to do. But what if uh, you have one of another marketing product and you can connect your Google Analytics account so data gets sent automatically to Google Analytics and uh, tracked in your uh, tool? Well, this is a nice feature, so I'm calling a task. It's, but you have to point it out and you can give them points uh, or rewards for connecting their Google Analytics account with your tool. Uh, or uh, whatever, if, uh, if you have a, a fashion app, you can think about, hey, if you log in with Facebook, um, and you, uh, you can uh, you can uh, have a, uh, one month for free or something. Uh, B2B. Uh, yeah, think about the user and the user-related awards. <laughs> it's a nice sentence. What I meant here is um, if you have a one user tool, you have one user. So uh, if you sell B2B, the one time it will be the owner if a sole proprietorship uh, company is. But from a smaller company, it will be uh, the owner. Uh, from a uh, something bigger company, it will be the marketing manager. Uh, but if you have several roles in your, so you have a tool that has several roles, like uh, uh, somebody of the administration, but also the CFO, um, of course, you don't want to have them offer the same reward. So you have to think about if you're using it for B2B. Um, the goal is to change behavior. So um, get them to do something or 
to not do something. So if there, if you have a feature in your tool and you want to uh, not encourage, but of, of encourage, disencourage um, uh, certain behavior because it's quite expensive for you, uh, or uh, maybe you want to phase that pro uh, product feature out, uh, you can use uh, uh, gamification. Um, goals to make them familiar with features, goals to, uh, to get them back, uh, create buy-in. But you can also think about the certifications is a kind of gamification uh, 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 way of uh, uh, gamification. Like uh, if your product is really something, uh, is really something as a name in the market for itself, then uh, you want to, um, people are proud of using your product or having worked with your product, say, uh, put it that way, then uh, you can have them doing a test like, hey, I'm an uh, official gold expert in that and in that, in that tool. So um, there are in link two uh, links. Uh, the above uh, has uh, some really nice statistics about gamifications. Uh, uh, gamification, gamification. And the second is a list of game mechanics, like what, what is game, uh, game, what are we talking about? Um, but I'm gonna, what's, what's the mouse? Yeah, well, we're straight here. Achievements, um, game uh, appointments, behavioral momentum, the tendency of players to keep them doing what they have been doing, uh, blissful productivity, uh, bonuses, cascading information, community countdown. Like uh, you have uh, 30 seconds or uh, three minutes to unlock this feature. Now you get, uh, et cetera, a coupon for uh, Starbucks, whatever. You you get the idea. Um, here we are. Yeah, focused attention and service. Um, Become through good conversations and real partners. Yeah, this this is more Dutch than English. Um, but we talk mostly about software, but um, in all other senses, you meet uh, and we, we talk about outside Corona. You meet people, you shake hands, uh, you have sometimes long conversations with uh, customers uh, because they want to uh, tell them what's on their heart or what's happening in the company and you have a good conversation. And in my experience, both personally and business-wise, you need that good conversation to become a partner. And mostly you need that good conversations um, to find out what their core problems are and uh, to get to deeper level uh, to a deeper level of understanding um, other ways to get trust and uh, have this good conversation help them with the core problems help them through critical events like uh, really working your butt and the, the butts of your team off during for a special weekend, if Monday the customer really needs something for that special presentation for his board or whatever, um, help them with uh, setting up yearly plans and uh, uh, evaluations, etc. Uh, and uh, to summarize it, offer non-automated, exclusive, personal time. Of course, if your business model or your earnings model is not built for that. Um, then don't do it. But um, um, just for the sake of uh, pre, uh, pre, pre, pre calculated uh, uh, pre calculations, uh, assume that you will um, 
but giving this one, you will lower one third of your uh, 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 of your churn. So maybe, especially if you're high end, this kind of attention. So think about it. Incentives to stay, you should almost never go there because you're really too late if you need to use this kind of tactics. But uh, offer them a different pricing model, value based or uh, just a straight discount. Uh, free training so they can learn how to get value of your product. Uh, free access to premium features. Uh, release of new features up uh, faster. So um, especially if you, if you have a few customers and they leave for a specific reason, like they tell you straight on or through the lines like, hey, if you would have this this and this connection, we would stay. But as long uh, I we cannot stay if you don't have that uh, integration. Well, that's something uh, if you have, say, five or six customers to worry about, if you're really high end, that's something that you want to uh, increase on your product roadmap. But in general, uh, you're already almost, uh, say, in 95% of the cases, uh, you're too late if you need this kind of tactics. This was it for today. Monday, uh, we're going to talk about advocacy and then we're done with the funnel and then the fun starts. So theoretically for your mindset, you have finished all your funnel. Uh, intellectually, you understand how you get things in place and why it's so important to, to have this overview before you start gaining traffic because you will see once you're running that different kind of keywords where you pay for in Google search ads come in with different attention, uh, 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 different expectations from your product. So, and have different customer success and different churn ratios. Like, so it could be like, um, uh, the keyword buy a cheap uh, XXX product, uh, uh, gets you a high conversion rate, but a really, uh, with a high CPC. So high conversion rate with a high cost per acquisition but also a high churn rate, so you're bleeding money. While uh, other keywords, uh, for example, in this case, without cheap, but um, sustainable uh, solution for XXX, um, less traffic, uh, somewhat lower cost per uh, acquisition, uh, but really low churn rate that uh, has a VAR. So uh, that's why, uh, this program was uh, set up this way. Um, this was it for today.